All right, Daniel, talk to me about this, because I think this is a widely overlooked aspect of President Trump's strategy. The left's narrative is that President Trump might have accidentally bumbled into the right thing, which is a pretty lame accusation just because they don't like him. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, President Trump has, this is the third stage of President Trump's strategy when it comes to Iran. He pulled us out of the Iran deal. He imposed heavy economic sanctions on them. And only when their economy was crippled did he make this strike knowing they can't afford to uh, strike back. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And when you look at Iran's economy, which is based almost exclusively on, on petrochemicals, on petroleum, oil, and gas, um, when he became president in 2017, Iran was producing over 2 uh, million barrels a day of oil. They are down now to just a little bit more than 500,000. And so if they have lost one-third of their oil production capability because their markets have dried up, that means they don't have any revenue. The, uh, the, the uh, uh, Iran deal that Obama signed with them, when he gave them those pallets of cash, that was the equivalent of almost a quarter of their entire GDP. It's, it's not just a lot of money, $150 billion. It is an absurd amount of money, money proportionate to what their GDP is. And so President Trump has put them in a devastating position, and they cannot afford uh, to fight, to, to go to war, very similar to what Reagan did in the Cold War, the way he made the Soviet Union bankrupt. We didn't launch any missiles or bullets. He bankrupted them as a country. President Trump's doing the same thing. Yeah, and I, I think it's a brilliant strategy and one that is not being recognized properly because a nation's not going to go to war even for ideological reasons, if they know that they're not going to be able to fund that war and it's going to basically cause their immediate death. I think that's the case in Iran. So we have, you know, they're the fourth largest, the world's fourth largest crude oil reserves, but they have sanctions on the sale, as you mentioned. Their world trade is shrinking. The cost of living in, for Iranian, the Iranian people, and this is the sad part, that the regime puts the people of Iran through this, but the cost of living is rising because their currency is weakening. Inflation is skyrocketing. There aren't job opportunities. And their unemployment rate is somewhere around 17%. That's pretty nasty. Yeah, and their unemployment rate for uh, youth for uh, uh, under 30 is close to 25, 26%. So if you're a young person in Iran and you do have access to the internet, which they have a restricted access, but they have some, and you see the world, you see other countries, and you realize your country is not in good shape. And there have been multiple times the Green Revolution that President Obama ignored, but even just a few weeks ago when the mainstream media here in America ignored millions of people taking to the streets trying to push out the mullahs, trying to get their own domestic regime change. And so I think President Trump has come in at a very good time. People in Iran don't want to live in these conditions. It was a prosperous country. It had incredible civil rights, women's rights in the 70s up until the Islamic Revolution. I think the people People there want to go back to the way things were and be a member of the World Organization. So President Trump has given them that push.